Hi there. In this video, we're going to go over spreadsheet formula basics. If you're new to spreadsheets uh, and using formulas at all, it can seem a little complicated at first, but we are going to simplify it for you. So first thing to know about spreadsheet formulas, each cell is its own little world. So let's have a look at that is you'll see there's spreadsheets are a series. It's an array of boxes and these boxes are called cells. What you do in each cell does not impact the other cell unless you want it to. Uh, what does that mean for you? Uh, if you write words here, uh, they don't affect anything that happens in any of these other cells. You can write more words. Uh, and anything you write in either of these, if you put numbers, letters, doesn't matter, it won't impact or affect the cells next to it unless you do something to make it do that, which we'll get to in just a second. But you know, you can change the formatting and change the colors if you wanted to, and it won't change the color or the font size of anything around it. So first thing you need to know. The second thing is cells can perform actions such as, but not limited to arithmetic and math. They can combine words. They can manipulate dates. They can do weird things such as changing words to numbers and vice versa. They can even get information from websites such as images and text. Uh, now Google Sheets has a built-in formula that does this. I don't know if Excel has a formula, a built-in formula that allows you to do this at this point. So can't speak to that. Uh, the third thing you need to know is the cell actions are called formulas or functions, and they must begin with the equal sign. So the difference between a formula and a function is a function is a predefined formula. Uh, a quick example would be sum. So let's just have a look at, at formulas and functions. So uh, a formula would be two, plus two. That's a formula. A function would be sum two and two. Uh, now it's doing the addition for us. So that that's the difference. So when you're doing these formulas, it may be confusing, like, why are we starting with the equal sign? Why, why does that happen? So when you are using paper, you're going to write down two plus two equals four. However, if you're using a calculator, or in this case a spreadsheet, you're just going to put 2 plus 2. With spreadsheets, though, because you can do so many different things with them, I can put images in here, or I can write words, I can just put numbers. There, you use the equal sign to tell the spreadsheet that you you want to do an action. So those are, you know, you want to do a formula, you want to combine some words, you want to do some addition, you want the spreadsheet to do something for you, you want it to automate something for you. And that's what the equal sign is saying. So let's take it a little bit further, it is 2 plus 2 equals 4. We're going to remove the 4 because we're not going to write it down. It's just going to be 2 plus 2 equals what? And let the spreadsheet fill it in. But we have to turn it around because what equals 2 plus 2? We're starting with the equal sign. And this doesn't just apply to math. Um, it applies to everything within the spreadsheet. So we can get rid of the question mark and say, what equals 2 plus 2? And as you can see over here, what equals 2 plus 2 is 4. Well, let's say you want to do something else, such as what equals hello and world. Well, if you've already caught on to what's happening, what equals hello and world, you may catch that it's hello world without any space. Now, if we say what is hello and space and world, it will give us hello world, if that makes any sense. Uh, so important to note. Next, moving on, we have Cell references can reference one another. This is very important and saves lots and lots and lots of time. Uh, as you can see, right now we're just putting in the numbers for us. But with spreadsheets, we can automate stuff. So maybe you put in some numbers over here, and you want to reference them over here. So instead of 2 plus 2, let's say, well, let's take a step back. Um, first, notice 
the columns here, there are letters for the columns and numbers for the rows. So to reference one, you need to notice, let's, where's B? Two would be seven, or A5 equals five. So let's say, what is A5? And we'll just write it in here. It's five. Uh, what if it was five? Well, it changes because now A5 is the word five. I'll change that back real quick. Uh, and you can just reference any type of cell. So real quick note on ref cell referencing is oftentimes you may want to uh, use that same formula that you just created, that same cell reference, and you want to move it around. So right now, the reference we have, if we just drag it down, it is showing us A5, A6, A7, and you can see this up here in the corner. So let's start with A1. And a faster way to do this, instead of typing in A1 like I just did, you can actually just click on the cell you want to reference. So let's reference A1, let's drag down, and it's going to know because you copied it down to copy A2, A3, A4, A5, instead of keeping it A1. So what if you just want to keep it one? Well, we need to use what is, we need to use a static reference or what's called an absolute reference. We, we don't want it to move when we copy it. So let's change that formula. In order to do that, we use the dollar sign. So we want to keep the row number static. Now, right now we could move the column, but let's, let's have a look at this. So we've told it to only look at the first row. We didn't tell it to only look at the first column. So if we copy to the right, it looks at B1 now. If you want to do both, then you have to put a dollar sign in front of both the column and the row reference. So if we copy down and copy over, no matter how many times you do it, it's going to keep that same reference. All right, so text within a formula must be surrounded by quotation marks, unless it's a cell reference. So this is very important when you're using uh, functions such as the if function that allow you to use words. Instead of, you're, you're not always gonna be using functions for math. So let's have a look at that. So you saw we did hello space world, and this time we're just going to uh, include the space, all of it within the same quotation marks, so we don't have to do all the ands. However, if I do equals, remember equals says, it's telling the spreadsheet to do an action. So what is hello world? Hello world is not an action, it knows. It's not saying show text, it's just saying it, it's confused and it's gonna give you an error. However, if you want to reference a cell that is just text, so let's just write hello world. The spreadsheet isn't gonna to try to do anything with this text. It just says, oh, hey, you put information there. Fantastic. Well, let's reference that. Let's say D1. We don't need to put quotation marks around. So we, we did what is D1? And it's hello world. We don't need to put quotation marks around D1. In fact, if you did, it will just show D1, which doesn't help you at all. So we can do that with it. Uh, you can even combine num words and numbers if you wanted to. So we can say, what is D1? And well, we can do one, two, three, because numbers are okay to just put straight in here. Uh, and the reason for this, the reason why it allows you to reference cells with text is because you, the spreadsheet knows the type of information that is in each cell. It knows that these that this is just text. And it knows if you only put numbers that those are just numbers. A quick example would be if I do uh, 2 plus D2, it's going to add them together and gives us 125. But if I say 2 plus hello world, it's going to freak out and say, you can't do that because you can't add words and numbers. This doesn't make sense. So keep that in mind when you are using formulas. And lastly, you can have multiple functions inside a cell. In fact, you can have functions inside functions, inside functions, inside functions, and so on and so forth. Uh, let's have a quick look at that as well. So 
let's say we use our the sum function. This is one of the most popular functions. We won't go into it, but it's good to know. Again, if you've seen it a couple times, we'll say sum this, um, sum b1 and sum 2 and 2. So I just put the sum function inside another sum function, and it gives us 10 because 2 plus 2 equals 4 plus 6 equals 10. Fairly simple and straightforward. Uh, anyway, I hope this tutorial was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, uh, please leave them in the comment section below. And if you have any questions uh, or would like to learn something else, uh, again, let me know in the comments and we'll make some videos for you. Thanks.